Hi, everybody. I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with my colleague, Jemima McAvoy, who's written about Subway and the billions that I guess have now essentially been passed on to the family, but it's about so much more. So Jemima, let's start with some context around Subway and the two co-founders, late co-founders, because we don't know much about this chain to the extent we know about Ray Kroc, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So I, I started looking into Subway and the wealth of its owners a couple of months ago when the sandwich chain announced that it was up for sale. Um, you know, both of the founders died. Um, Fred DeLuca died in 2015. Peter Buck died at the end of 2021. So nobody really knew what happened to, you know, the stakes after that. So I was interested to figure that out. Um, and it's been historically uh, what we call in our industry a black box in terms of we just have known very little about the wealth of the owners. Um, so I looked over a lot of different documents and interviewed a bunch of people and managed to um, get some some numbers and some estimates about, you know, just how much wealth the owners have accumulated. And one key takeaway was um, Fred DeLuca, we were able to confirm that his stake, his 50% in the company was passed down to his widow, mm -hmm. um, Elizabeth DeLuca, who we estimate is worth as much as $8 billion. Um, Peter Buck gave his half of his um, of the stake in the sandwich chain to charity posthumously. So, but he still passed down some significant assets to his two sons, um, William and Christopher. So, um, they're they're not without without something. No, and, and and I think it's interesting the financial maneuvering you write about. I want to mention. I remember when Deluca died. It really was almost like the height. Of Subway, because mm -hmm. it was at one point was, I believe, the biggest by number of outlets, the biggest fast food chain in the world. But it was also kind of the beginning of the end, wasn't you? Right. I meant you mentioned this in a story with, you know, the scandal they had with their, you know, spokesman, basically. And I and then the franchisees, that's a lot of um, upset franchisees about basically how the business was being run. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So Subway's revenues peaked at um, $18.1 billion in 2012. Um, and they were still doing well, you know, through 2015. And then as you mentioned, Fred DeLuca dies, they have this like, simultaneous scandal with Jared Fogel, their, their very famous spokesperson who starred in all the advertisements. Yeah, the guy who um, lost yeah, weight eating only at Subway. Exactly. Lost 245 pounds, he claims from eating Subway sandwiches, which, you know, that's <laughs> interesting in itself um but anyway he pleaded guilty to you know child uh, pornography and and sex charges which was just you know pretty colossal for the company um and then from you know 2015 or 2016 onwards um the company's just kind of been floundering a bit you know there's been um 25 percent of their u.s stores have closed since fred deluc died um and franchisees have been struggling and against that backdrop, you know, I was able to calculate um, that this, the owners of Subway since, since um, over the past 13 years have taken in about $5 billion in royalties. That's after taxes. Um, so, you know, their profits didn't necessarily significantly decline, even as their franchisees have been struggling over the years. So. There's definitely, I spoke with some fran franchisees who had, you know, mixed feelings about that, including some who were unhappy and are asking for um, a portion of the sale if it does go through. Yeah, well, that's like, always the challenge with a private company. Is it? But talk about, talk about how they manage their money, because in addition to taking money out of the company um, that they co-own, there are also some interesting, um, you know, maneuvers that they've done with philanthropy, you know, planning, et cetera. Yeah. Not unusual, perhaps, but certainly helped to enrich the coffers. No, certainly not. It's not unusual. And it's it's smart. You know, if you're a high net worth individual, then obviously um, you are thinking about your taxes. And it seems to be something that has been top of mind for both of Subway's founding families. Um the company restructured a few years ago and moved all of its intellectual property to Delaware. 
um, which is a way of, you know, minimizing taxes because there's no state tax on royalties in Delaware. So any taxes they were paying before, um, state taxes on those royalties were just gone. Um, another example of a tax, you know, minimizing uh, maneuver by the subway owners is Peter Buck um, started buying up forest land in the North Main Woods in um, 2007, and he accumulated uh, over 1.2 million acres during his lifetime, which I estimate could be worth um, as much as $1 billion. And he began passing that down to his sons almost as soon as he was buying it. Um, but he used this mechanism called fractional interest discounts, where mm -hmm. basically he bought it all together um, and value it was valued at one thing. Then he passed it on to his two sons. And because he divided the ownership and the land was split in half, he basically valued it at about half of the cost and paid significantly less taxes on it. The IRS challenged it. Um, and he died midway through the case, but it was ultimately settled. But that's just another example of how, you know, um, estate planning and generational wealth and, and you know, minimizing taxes and in all of the various ways you can seem to be things that were top of mind for Subway's owners. Have any of these second or third generation, um, you know, descendants have they actually continued to be involved in the company at all? I mean, I'm thinking about other examples in and out, of course, being unique, perhaps. But what have they done with the money? Are they basically philanthropists? Are they doing their own businesses? Or is it who knows because they don't talk to us? Yeah, so they don't talk to us, but we do know that neither family is involved in you know managing the business in, in any day-to-day -day sense of the word. Um, when I was talking to franchisees, most of them, you know, were like, we don't even know who our owners are, actually. Um, they've been silent for a long time. So, uh, you know, they both of the Peter Buck sons have had various roles on like Doctors Associates, which is the parent company yeah. of Subway. But it's been more like president roles and it doesn't seem like they've been extremely involved. Elizabeth DeLuca retired from the company. Um, she wrote operations manuals. She retired in the 2000s, so she hasn't worked there in decades either. It seems like both families are now just very focused on philanthropy. Elizabeth DeLuca, like pretty much the year her husband died, began giving away huge chunks of her fortune to the Fred DeLuca Foundation, um, you know, over $100 million multiple years in a row. Um, and before that, you know, their family wasn't giving very much to the charity at all, at least according to the filing. So there's certainly been a step change there. And then Peter Buck's sons are just continuing his legacy of, of gifting um, tens of million do of dollars to the foundation every year and also the conservation in, in Maine. And so finally, when this sale or if this sale goes through, um, who will get the money? Yeah, so since Peter Buck donated his half of Subway to the foundation, um, the money will go to his foundation, which they ultimately plan to give to charity. Um, and then for Fred DeLuca's half, that will go to his widow, Elizabeth DeLuca. Um, and the Subway sale, there's a few numbers floating around, but currently the industry talk is that it's going to be valued somewhere between about $7 billion and $10 billion. So... Um, yeah, she's, we currently estimate her at $8 billion, assuming she's invested her royalties over the years. And, and that's even with some pretty hefty uh, tax assumptions that we're putting on her. So, so um, they've done very yeah. well. We'll see how the franchisees do, but um, clearly there's still some demand. For sure. For Great. Sure. Thanks for joining us, Jemima. Thank you. Thanks for having me.